Greetings children, Captain Disillusion here. Visual effects are everywhere. Even in things that are the opposite of visual, like music. According to research, over a dozen people on Earth are practitioners of this strange art form, emitting rhythmic noises from their mouths and other things to create pleasing soundscapes. Let's listen to one now. Oh, sorry, uh, sometimes the companies responsible for spreading awareness of the music don't like it when it's played. Now, because a song involves the lesser sense, it often needs to be accompanied by a video to be detectable at all. And these musical videos have historically been a breeding ground for VFX innovation. Once in a while you guys ask me, how do they do star guitar with all the stuff in the window passing by matching to the beat? Well, that's actually a great one. See, if you look closely, a smokestack... <laughs> what a chilling effect. <clears throat> Some of the most iconic music videos experiment with old effects techniques or use the latest technology in unexpected ways. Think of the artsy rotoscoping in AHA's Take On Me. Or the grungy projections in Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground by the White Stripes. Or the incredible stretching sets in HomePod Welcome Home, directed by Spike Jones for Apple, featuring FKA Twigs, set to the song Till It's Over, written by Michael Uzawuru and Jeff Kleinman, performed by Anderson Pack. <laughs> Damn it! Isn't anyone in the music industry chill anymore? Hmm. Atarashi Gako? Ah! What the? Mite! Atarashi Alien! Haken! Koitsu wa yuko teki na yatsu ka? Teiyu ka, koko doko? Teiyu ka, nan de koitsu hikatte no? Uh. Warebore wa sekai o suku! Ha! Okay. I'm just gonna adjust my translator and try again. <clears throat> I'm. Captain Disillusion. I teach people about visual effects and stuff. The viewers out there? Ooh. And uh, you are? Oh. Leaders, aka Students, huh? With your own songs and dance routines? Hmm. How would you guys like to earn some extra credit on a special assignment? Hmm. <laughs> To tackle a topic this big, we gotta have a system. There are countless music videos, but they tend to follow trends. If someone experiments with data moshing, someone else is gonna do it too. So lots of videos can be grouped by a few tried and true visual conventions like skipping time through messy little morphs, attaching a panoramic camera to the artist, abstract randomness, capturing everything in one long take or making it look like you did, shooting things in reverse, cloning and layering people and objects using a motion motion control camera rig, using long takes and reverse motion, using long takes and motion control, using all three together. Hmm, I can't help noticing that this combo approach tends to yield better, more memorable videos. Maybe observing what works in other people's stuff and then combining those elements in new ways with some personal flair is the key to creativity. Okay, now this is the studio and I want you to be real careful. Don't go. Atarashi Gakko are special and have been making fans geek out on their unique brand of J-pop for a bit longer than it takes to graduate high school. Suzuka is the leader, also Rin's the leader, so is Kanon, and Miju is too. They're all class leaders, don't you get it? Now, personally, I can't relate to being a costumed character, stuck in time, entertaining people with a niche skill, but I'll use the power of imagination to direct AG in real spec VFX shots for three songs from their recent EP, Snack Time. 
if I could just come up with some ideas. Free Your Mind is a classic rock and roll inspired dance tune clearly designed to coax zoomers out of depression. It makes me think of jump kicking a kite, taking over the streets, being in charge, and constructing your own reality. The kinetic mayhem of OK Go stunts somehow captures that energy. At least, I like a DIY vibe in a warehouse. And there was that cool 90s video for the song Virtual Insanity by Jamiroquai, where the floor slides around in trippy ways. I want to try something like that. Now, we can't build an entire movable room on casters like they did. All we have at our disposal is the help of a few interns, as well as a modest 70-foot-long green screen cyclorama. And I'm sure these green uwabaki are gonna be fine. But just like in that video, I'll move the camera instead of the subjects to create the illusion, using a handheld gimbal and a super high-tech dolly. We'll tweak the usual choreography and shoot it in three separate passes. First, a static master with just Suzuka and Miju. What's great is some of the girls are free during every take. In Japan, students must clean their own classroom. On my set, they'll have to be dolly grips. For Rin's pass, keeping the camera at the same exact height, we truck around in an L shape while she stands still, then resumes the dance. Yeah. <laughs> Very strong girls. <laughs> really Joey, Joey was struggling. <laughs> For Kanon's pass, we do the same thing in the opposite direction. Once combined, we should have two sad girls sliding into place to be invited into the happy gang. You might be wondering why it was necessary to physically move instead of just sliding their images wherever we want in post. The answer is because the human body is actually three-dimensional and distorts with perspective. We don't want them to feel like flat cutouts, especially because we really are setting them up as flat cutouts in our 3D scene. Using a brilliant technique from a Blender sensei, we'll reconstruct not only the camera motion, but the proper depth placement for the girl's keyed footage. With a bit of driver code, generously contributed by an anime avatar on Twitter, we'll convert the sliding camera motion into object motion, and reframe the whole scene through a new animated camera. Now it's a simple matter of creating the entire digital environment from scratch. I like the artificial vibe of the Jamiroquai video and want to combine it with city imagery. Roads, traffic, graffiti. Let's model simple chunks of stage scenery that look like they were built inside a warehouse, accented by a giant LED screen. We'll make it feel like a display by actually dicing up the surface into red, green, and blue components. And on it, we'll put this stock footage of an intersection in Ginza. Why not? We'll have the girls slide on moving walkways that intersect. Try building that in real life. It's all a bit brutalist and bare, so let's mix in some whimsy. Something like the cartoonishness in Cherumiko's Easy Breezy video, which by the way was shot with a really cool volumetric capture technology called Holosys. Hol Holosys. Holosys? Holosys. Let's draw a bunch of inoffensive graffiti and texture map it along the walls. There's an interesting video for the song Tu by Tulipa Ruiz that uses cutout animation. It inspires me to take a huge shortcut by adding some flat cardboard elements, like it's a puppet show or a school play. That's something. Once lighting is in place, the camera projection mapping method automatically helps us with realistic shadows and reflections. But Suzuka and Miju can't always touch the floor at the same time, so one of their shadows sometimes doesn't connect. What's the solution? You and I are probably thinking the same thing. Yep, break up the entire render into its component optical passes, mathematically separate the shadows cast by the girls, and subtly warp them as needed, then reassemble everything back in the final composite. This should look epic. But first, we gotta shoot some more stuff. The chorus needs an even bigger spectacle. Something with orbital motion to contrast the angular moves of the first part. Definitely not this overused trope, though. We get it. Life is a flip of a coin. Enough already! I've been fascinated by this technique in the video for Nah by Perfume, where they cloned the artists in a radial pattern by using an array of three synchronized cameras. This was done even more artfully in Fear and Delight by the correspondent with a whole bunch of cameras inside a green screen cylinder. I'll set up four GoPros aimed at a center point as precisely as possible while an intern filming the filming of this is filmed. After working out the logistics, each AG member performs inside the volume individually and as a group. 
Now, if you're following along at home on your giant green screen stage, I recommend doing the opposite of what I did, using the deep side of the psych for close-ups and the front for background, so you don't end up rotoscoping countless dancing silhouettes against the bare soundstage. Maybe that will work. I think it's gonna look cool. Oh, Captain. After syncing and matting 28 layers of 5K footage, we project them into our 3D scene, this time on curved planes, which will give a sense of parallax when we orbit the camera slightly. I'll stick with the abstract theatrical set vibe and build a sort of dance floor inspired by legendary Gondry videos like Let Forever Be and Around the World. To weasel out of any floor shadow issues, it'll have light up walkways, driven by a simple texture animated to the music. And after a few final touches, it's time for a world premiere. One, two, one, two, three, four. The second song, Candy, is about eating candy, really? And features hilariously cartoony choreography. It definitely puts me in a 2D animation mood. The zany work of Syriac springs to mind, or the White Stripes fell in love with a girl Lego brick video. Also the many delightfully cheesy moving collage offerings of the 80s. But mainly, I'm reminded of the genre standard defining music video Pon 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 by Kari Pamu Pamu. Probably not an accident since she's like a big sister to AG. Let's combine the Pon 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 aesthetic with 2D animation and human stop motion videos like Easy Way Out or sledgehammer. To do this efficiently, I've devised a technique that shifts the burden of effort from the director onto the artist. Instead of posing the girls frame by frame for hours, I'll have them perform the routine with extreme precision at half speed four times in a row. That way we'll have alternate versions of every frame for simulating a messy stop-motion look. Of course, jumping, stepping, and rinning in slow motion requires incredible muscle tone and cardiovascular endurance. <laughs> of which I have plenty. Okay, that's one. We gotta do three more. Okay. We capture these takes in a full wide shot at high res so that all the positioning can be done in post. If I had to do it over, I'd probably film each member separately to avoid all kinds of issues when they intersect. I sync up the four takes and conform them to 12 frames per second. An expression then randomly toggles between the different takes on each frame, making things wiggly. And another simple piece of code, contributed by members of the official Captain Disillusion Patreon Discord, allows me to limit and override the frame choices when I don't like them. Now, time to make Make everything else. I model a library of delicious 3D sweets. I also draw a bunch of low effort 2D ones. You can't have a song about candy without lots of candy. <laughs> then I channel my inner surrealist and spend some time gradually turning this whole thing into a sugar coma fever dream. And the result goes a little something like this. <laughs> For the final track, Pineapple Kryptonite, we're gonna knock things up a notch. BAM! It's a song about defeating an invasion with a secret weapon, so obviously we're in epic Hollywood blockbuster territory. But we're not just gonna go for tongue-in-cheek, like a Beastie Boys video. Hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? I want to steep our shots in the sometimes overbearing CGI look of modern blockbuster movies. 
There's a long history of CG environments and characters in music videos, from the boxy guys in Money for Nothing, to a skinless Robbie Williams traumatizing everyone with Rock DJ, to this cool video for the song Animation by Young Juvenile Youth. Ah! I'm also mesmerized by this video for the Chemical Brothers Beck collaboration Wide Open, in which Sonoya Mizuno gradually transforms into a shopping mall sculpture via an astounding amount of motion capture, manual tracking, and 3D reconstruction construction done by artists at the mill. Yeah, let's do all of this! For the first of two shots, I film a piece of the dance on the gimbal, simulating a crane move. Again, we can extend and exaggerate that move in 3D, and toward the end, when I drop down, we'll instead keep the virtual camera in place, making it look like the girls levitate up. Then we build a realistic desert environment with the help of some stock 3D elements and a blender feature I will not master in my lifetime, geometry nodes. They'll also help us inflate the projections for a realistic lighting pass. Speaking of lighting, we'll add some UFO abduction spotlights and emphasize the power of the tractor beam with procedurally animated debris and texture sprites of dust elements. Oh, and uh, once the girls begin to levitate, I want them to transform into alien beings of unknown origin. For that, I'll use abstract 3D human figures and make them look melty with moving texture displacement. To skip the arduous task of proper body motion capture, we can use a free AI tool to reconstruct their movements directly from the footage. Hey, it works pretty good! Unfortunately, it doesn't account for the camera motion, so I have to manually unanimate each of them into the proper place throughout the shot. But now we have a CG alien version of each member aligned with the real one. I'll transform them from one to the other by trailing this procedural texture with an old-fashioned, genuine, Michael Jackson-powered 2D morph. Hashtag bring back morphs, but we're not done yet. For the second shot, we'll pull out all the stops. In this avant-garde portion of the dance, the girls are just punching each other. I want to raise the stakes by putting them atop a tall cliff and turning two of them into gigantic floating heads that require a bit more than a punch to take down. First, I capture Suzuka and Rin in a dynamic orbiting shot by doing what almost no other full-time YouTuber can do, running with my physical body several times. Okay, let me see what... <laughs> While an intern controls the camera's rotation remotely. Sure, it might look silly now, but once we 3D track the camera, reproject the footage, stabilize and reframe the shot, and put some temporary heads into the scene, it starts to come to life. I'd like to fix these obvious fist-face gaps, so I'll do some compositing hacks on the footage in those moments, and also spend several lifetimes rotoscoping the reverse portions. The environment is a post-battle spacescape full of geonode-driven asteroids. With light sources on every side, the shadows from the camera projection don't really hold up, so I have to build and hand-animate dummy AG legs to occlude light more realistically. I shall call them Tokyo Night Crawlers. As for the floating heads, that's easy. We simply need to create accurate, fully articulated 3D replicas of the girls' faces and hair, then animate them singing with motion capture. First, as a backup, we'll use an iPhone's True Depth camera to sample the contour and low-res textures for each face. But we'll also snap detailed survey photos as reference for building the high-resolution models. These images projected onto the resulting models can then be stitched into textures, cleaned up, delit, and reapplied. The meshes will have a set of standard facial action coding system deformations. It's the same tech that makes Memojis possible, but used for good instead of evil. Once it's all set up, a real face can drive the digital avatar in real time. Mom? Dad? I'm, I'm a VTuber, VTuber now. But let's have Miju and Kanon provide their own performances. One more. You want it? Okay. With all the motion data applied and cleaned up, I have to perfect the hair by growing, cutting, and styling thousands of simulated strands for days to the point that the sight of pigtails makes me curl up into a ball and hiss cry. But after all the struggles, the render passes, the tweaks, and the J.J. Abrams amounts of lens flare, we finally get this. 
did a great job mm -hmm. but now I'm afraid it's time for us to go class dismissed oh just wait captain aotenaide so da yo mada owatte nai i'm sorry captain wa watashi tachi no onjin desu dakara kondo wa watashi tachi ga o reyo shitai anata no performance skill o watashi tachi ga migakuban desu hu kigaete kudasai kore ga koi kore ga unmei kore ga seishun de yatsu de